Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting ready to start, man. Uh, you know, have you ever had so much information? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, Mary Jackson. Mary Jackson, she asked me that every week. Um, so I have to make sure I tell her that I'm starting. But um, what I was sharing with them is that, you know, you know, you have so much information, you know, when you, because I studied and I meditate, I mean, all day, and especially when God puts something on you, you know, it's kind of hard to let it go when you don't really want it to go because you want to see what he has to say. Right. And I think that probably the, the, one of the biggest problems with people is when God puts something on them, they kind of just shrug it off, mm -hmm. you know, and, and don't really understand, you know, when God speaks, you know, it's best that you listen, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why a lot of people miss the Lord because they really don't listen. They've not conditioned themselves, and I say condition themselves, meaning walking with the Lord on a daily basis to where, you know, you automatically have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, and you want to know what God is saying. Um, we have in, uh, in personal lives as well as, you know, in churches, we've allowed, you know, false doctrine, uh, false preaching, false teaching, uh, demonic influence, seducing spirits, and so on and so forth to enter into either the church that calls itself the house of God. And not only am I talking about the house of God in a building, I'm talking about the house of God on people individually because the Bible says that we are the church. We are one individual person, but we are a part of the church of Jesus Christ and we make up that church. And so um, what we don't understand is that the commandments that God gives us in regard to the church, he's talking to us individually as well. And we cannot think outside of the word of God. We must always think inside the word, what God is saying inside. Because God gives us, uh, according to Jesus in Matthew 7, he gives us a, a, a direction that a believer is to walk in. And it's the straight and it's the narrow. Mm -hmm. right. You know, it's yeah. the straight and the narrow. Yes. I mean, it's almost like, you know, we talk about having tunnel vision. You know, and you have tunnel vision and what you think and what you say and what you believe. Mm -hmm. And you can find all of it within that perspective, within that straight and narrow way that God speaks of because the things that God considers or people rather consider to be narrow if they came from God then they are more than narrow yeah. and if they are narrow you still have room in order to receive even more from the Lord see most people will close off their heart from God when they have made up in their minds you know that they are you know that I'm good you know, I guess somebody says, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, whatever. We never are good. Right. That's right. Never. None are good, not one, only God, right. according right. to Jesus, yeah. see. And the purpose in our lives is not to be good. Right. The purpose is to be holy. Amen. Amen. The purpose right. is to seek first the kingdom of God. Right. Walking in the light as Jesus is in the light. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of a believer. Amen. We do not allow ourselves to be influenced by outside sources, outside things, outside people. And what gets us in such a pickle is when we start doing that. Amen. See? Because, you know, Jesus said, look, there ain't nothing good out there. Right. Broad right. is the way that leads to destruction, yes. and many there be that find it. And that's what he says in Matthew yeah. 7. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. And what happens is, you know, that I don't get sometimes, if people get comfortable with God, mm -hmm. you know, it's one thing to be comfortable and it's another thing to abide. That's right. right. Jesus said, abide in yeah. me. That's right. He yeah. said, don't get comfortable because what do we do when we get comfortable? Man, we start moving around a little bit to get a little bit more comfortable. Right. See? And when you get comfortable in your faith and in your walk and your relationship with God, 
that's when you start having problems. Right. Amen. Your guard is down. Yep. Right. See, True. you're content now right. because you feel good and you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You sleep on God. Right. You're no different than those doggone disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. Right. Them right. suckers and doggone, they weren't only asleep, they were... <laughs> I mean, they were in a deep sleep. Yeah, that's what it said. Yeah. And see, we think that we have an excuse in our walk with the Lord when we get challenged a little bit. You know, we got to take time to doggone, whoo, take a breath and take a breather. And that's all the devil needs. Mm -hmm. It's for you to take a breather. Right. See, take a breather in your faith, take a breather in what you believe. And guess what? While you doggone resting and sleeping, the devil is always already coming up with a scheme to fill that void with deception right. and with right. lies and with unbelief. Right. See? And the next thing you know, you start resisting the truth and start embracing unbelief. Right. See? Amen. When you're asleep, you know, if I'm asleep and I leave this door open, not only can people come in and take everything that they want out the house, they can come in and bring whatever they want to in the yeah, house. Right, see? Yeah. And when your gate of your heart and your life is open to the devil, guess what? The Bible said he comes in like a flood. Yes, he does. Right. See? Yes, he does. Because he sees the opportunity now, you know, that look, they got their guard down. Right. They ain't really too hip on Jesus right now. So hey, man, look, we can bring some good stuff in there or make it look good. You know, we can deceive them or we can disguise it to make it look and feel like it's something from God. But me and you know it, it ain't, ain't that right, demon number two? Yeah. <laughs> we know it ain't right. See? With us, it's right because that's what we want. See? Right. right. The devil want a dog on. He don't want to only put like little pricks in your life, in your armor. He wants to blow that sucker yeah, up. That's right. yeah, what he wants to do. He wants to blow it up. When you blow, allow the devil to blow up your faith, your relationship, your trust in God, you don't have nothing left. Right. Because let me tell you something. When you forsake God or when you kind of like just throw him away, guess what? You don't have nothing. Right. You don't have anything. The one person... That was your rear guard. That was your armor bearer. God himself, he gone. Yeah. You are naked as a jaybird, right. see? Mm -hmm. What happened to Adam and Eve when they realized that they had sinned against God mm -hmm. and stuff? They got naked and they tried to hide. Yes, they did. Yep. Yes, they tried to cover themselves up. Right. What do you think a person that does that sin against God? They do the same That's thing. Right. Exactly. They try to cover up their sin yeah. and try to cover up the doggone uh, uh, convic convictions that God has manifested to them and allowed them to see. Yeah. See, we need to understand when God reveals something to us, God is not trying to destroy us. God is trying to get us into a place where he can heal us, where he can deliver us, and where he can build us up in himself. Right. See. Right. That's the whole, God don't want anybody to perish. Ain't that what the Bible says? Yes. He wished that none perish, but that everybody comes to the true knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what God wants, see. But when you out there playing around, you know, playing in the water and, you know, and then splashing in the water and rolling around in the mud and all of that stuff, you know, when you, especially when you roll around in the mud, when you get up, you look what? Dirty, filthy, and nasty. Mm -hmm. And you probably stink a little bit too. <laughs> See, and the thing is, is that, you know, what you going to do when you got that mud on you? You're going to go figure out a way to wash it off. What's going to wash it off? Water. Right. What does the Bible say that you need to get your sin off you? By the washing of the water of the word, by the word of God. Amen. See, Amen. that's what washes you and makes you clean. See? Amen. That's right. Cleaner than water. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus tell the woman at the well? You drink of this water right here, you ain't thirsty no more, sister. Amen. See? That's, right. That's what he's saying, see? And that woman believed what Jesus said and took him at his word, and guess what? She literally said to herself, man, I got a whole bunch of water, then I need to go share it with somebody. Mm -hmm. See? And that's the whole thing. If you keep your heart and your mind stayed on the Lord, if you put your faith and your trust in Jesus, you won't need to take a whole lot of baths. Right. right. See? Right. To be cleaned up. Right. See, people give in because they say they believe this lie that's been in the church forever. 
You know, especially in the Baptist church, we all going to sin. Mm -hmm. We all going to not. What do you think happens when you take that attitude? Yeah. We all going to sin. Guess what? You're going to sin. That's right. You're going to sin because you just said so. Yeah. That's right. If you have an attitude that we all going to sin, all you're saying to yourself is, you know, well, I know I'm going to sin at some point. And if you believe that, you know, you're going to sin, you don't put up any kind of resistance when you have certain temptations. Right. Now, certain temptations you ain't going to fool with because you never were that much interested in them in any way. Right. But what kind of temptation you think the devil going to put in front of you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those that you are weak in. Right. Right. See? Right. Those right. the ones that you have not built up True. your faith in. True. To right. stand right. in faith against that temptation. Right. To rebuke the devil. To rebuke the temptation. See? Right. He know you ain't got it going on with that. Right. So he be stupid himself to put something in front of you that he know you ain't paid no attention to it in 10 years. Right. See? Right. He ain't going to bring up nothing like that. The things the devil is going to put in front of you are things that he knows, first of all, will get your attention. Right. And if he can get your attention, then he can manipulate what you see and what you think. Absolutely. Because if you give the devil attention, trust me, you done gave him your mind, right. part of it, right. and you done allowed your eyes to start looking right. and lusting. Right. You know, your lust started about like this right here. But the more you kept your eyes on it, your lust started growing. Right. You're growing. Just like any temptation that the devil puts in front of a person, the more they look at it, then the more their lust starts taking control. Right. And what does James says about lust? When it's conceived, it yeah. bringeth forth sin. Yeah. And when sin is finished, it brings forth yeah. death. death. Yeah. Spiritual death. You may not fall dead in the physical, right. but you are deader than a doorknob in the spirit. Right. And when you are dead in the spirit, you can't hear nothing right. that God is saying. Absolutely. Right. I'm a child of God. I need to hear what God is saying. Amen. I must hear Amen. what God is saying. Amen. See? Amen. But if I put myself in a bad situation, it ain't nobody's fault but mine. Right. I can't blame Ken for something I did right. or a choice that I made. Right. Well, you know, if Ken had to come and, and, and pick me up and went with me, I wouldn't have done That's a lie. Right. That's right. a lie. You were glad he didn't pick you up. <laughs> See, <laughs> you was glad it didn't pick you up because you wanted to commit that sin. Yeah. And see, at least now you ain't got a witness. You wouldn't have a witness, but you do have an excuse. Right. What do most people do that 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 sin against God? Right. They don't do this. Right. They blame somebody right. else. Right. Mary Jackson. She does it to me all the time. <laughs> Mary Jackson. That was her fault. See, and and the thing is, is that. Is that when we really understand what the scriptures say about living like Jesus, mm -hmm. we will understand Jesus never made an excuse for nothing. Right. Right. Jesus never complained about anything. Mm -hmm. You know, when Jesus knew that he was going to have a hard test, what do you think he did? What do you think he did? He went and seen the Father, got in unity and in oneness with the Father, abided in him in prayer, and when he came back, he was ready. Right. See? Right. Because we need to understand Jesus was flesh, bone, and blood just like all the rest right. of us. Mm -hmm. See? And the things that he commands us to do, he had to go through all of it. Right. Right. Every bit of it. He had to go through it and stuff. Mm -hmm. See? But the thing is that there are things in our life we don't have to do. Right. See? Amen. We have a choice. That's why God gives us choice. Yes. We choose what we're going to do. We choose what we're going to say. And you hate it when somebody try to make you say something. Right. Or try to make you do something. See, right. God should not have to make any of his children do or say anything. Right. Because he says, I put my spirit in you that would cause you to walk in my statutes. That would cause you to do right. And the Bible also says, as Jesus is, then so are we. Right. We take on the complete and total persona of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Right. See? Right. And as long as we walk in that, we will walk in the light and God will expose all the crap, you know, that we're going to be confronted with or we're going to be faced with. Right. See? Right. And even if he doesn't expose it, if we are faithful and obedient, he's going to build us up and strengthen us to be able to handle it once we are confronted with it. Amen. See? Amen. Amen. We need to understand this is a 24-7 walk oh, with yeah. the Lord. Yeah. It's a 24-7 yes. belief. It's a 24-7 yeah. 
faith in Jesus Christ Amen. and in him only. Amen. It's a 24 7 of being aware of the wiles of the devil and those who serve him. See? Right. You right. got to be aware of all of that stuff. You know, you cannot not fellowship with somebody <laughs> that is not of God if you really don't know the way that they're supposed to be. Right. You don't really, you don't, you don't, you know, you're not going to know what to look for and stuff. Right. So when God says for you, to you to do something or to beware of something, trust me, your eyeballs better get big and your head better be straight up, mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. Because you got your head down, you may miss something. Mm -hmm. You know that. Y'all know that as well as I do. You walking with your head down, you can't see everything. Right. You know, you walking around with your head down, you ain't worried about looking to no which way. You just got your head down, mm -hmm. see? And all you're doing is looking at the ground, mm -hmm. see? You can't see what's up in front of you. You can't turn and see what's around and all of that. Because your whole focus is just focused on well on. Because what has happened is the devil done put such a heavy burden on your mind that you can't even think right. right. You can't even think right. You go to start doing something, doing one thing, and when you get there, you forgot what you were supposed to do. Because mm -hmm. you're worried. Amen. You know, Amen. you're fearful and all. So you're just kind of there, you know. And the thing is, is that if we have the mind of Christ, we know that we're going to be thinking like Jesus, see? Exactly. And we're going to see things the way he sees them mm -hmm. and not the way we see right. them, right. see? Right. And when we see things through the eyes of God, we see them by the Spirit. Yeah. And when we see them by the Spirit, then the Holy Spirit can tell us and show us what we need to do about it. Yeah. Right. See? Right. What we need to do about it. And that's the whole thing, man. You know, that's the whole thing. Is keeping our heart and our mind stayed upon the Lord. Amen. Looking unto Jesus who is the author and the Amen. finisher of our faith. Amen. But the one thing that we have to settle in our heart, even before any of that is, I'm going to believe every right. word of God. Amen. Right. I'm going to keep my mind on the Lord. I'm going to keep my eyes looking unto Jesus. I'm going to study the word of God. I'm going to read the word of God. I'm going to pray the word of God. I'm going to do everything that I've been commanded to do because I know that it's best for my soul right. for me to do that. See, and so, and so when God tells us something, we don't need to question it. Right. We just need to do it. See, Amen. and it's amazing that God will ask us to do something or tell us to do something, and we'll mm -hmm. we'll blow Him off. Uh -huh. You let certain other people that we got a real good relationship with call and say, hey, I need you to do so-and-so and so-and-so and so, see? Really? Okay, well, get, get, give me a minute. Let me get my clothes on or whatever. Why is that? Why is it that people are more ready to do what man says mm -hmm. as opposed to what God says, mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. And that will lead up to what I'm kind of talking about. Why do you think you got preachers, pastors, evangelists, folks who call themselves leaders in the church, why do you think that the majority of them are deceived? Mm -hmm. That are liars. They are children of the devil. See? Because they have forsaken their first love. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Not only forsaken them, they've left it. That's right. Mm -hmm. See? They've left and they've got a better plan. They have a better agenda. And they, gonna, they want to do what they want to do. And so what do you think they do? When Jesus told those guys in John chapter 8 that you were of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, you will do. He was talking to preachers too. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, it's amazing to me how we, how we try to put preachers in a whole different bucket than we do everybody else. Right. See? Yeah. Every word in this Bible, all of us are supposed to do it. That's right. Right. I don't care who the preacher is. He's supposed to do what this Bible says. Mm -hmm. In Timothy chapter 3, the Bible gives us these instructions. Turn over there if you would, please. First Timothy chapter 3. I'm always glad somebody to get there. Mm -hmm. Want to some tags? No, I don't want any tail. <laughs> you trying to throw rocks now. <laughs> trying 
try to throw rocks. <laughs> but she forget. I got a microphone in front of me. And I got a camera in front of me. And they can see and hear me talk about you. <laughs> okay, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, in this Timothy speech, he says, This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires the good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruled well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. And so, and then when you read on down past that, it tells you about the uh, the deacons and stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And and so the thing is that this is what God says, a pastor, the qualifications are for a pastor and for a deacon after, afterwards. And it also talks about that in 1 Timothy. Uh, I mean, in uh, Titus, I'm sorry. It talks about the qualifications over there too. Now, if you notice, all the qualifications are for men yes, and not sir. women. Amen. They're all for men and not Preach. women, you know. Sure. And so the thing is, is that, is that um, when you read that scripture, you know, God is saying, you know, I call men to be pastors. I call men to be deacons and stuff. It's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens is that because the church has gone the way that it's gone and going, you know, they decided, you know, that they don't really have to obey what God said. Wow. See? And so the thing is, is that number one, you know, even though he called men to be pastors, if they don't fulfill these qualifications, they can't preach. Amen. See? They right. can't preach. See, not just anybody can get up in front and preach according to what God has said. Right. See, true. I don't care if you male, if you're a man, you know, and then you got these lying women running around here talking about they're supposed to be preaching. Right. But the thing is, is like I've been saying ever since I started preaching and ever since I got saved, if I don't see it in the Bible, I'm not believing it. Right. And there's nowhere in Scripture where God tells a woman to be a pastor. Amen. And then when you look at these qualifications, what do they what do they do with them? Right. Do they just doggone just strike a match and just burn right. that page up and Amen. say, "Oh, we ain't gonna believe that page right there," Amen. you know? Amen. And the reason for that is because they have listened to the world. Right. See, right. the right. world is trying to tell a woman that she's special, and God says, "I'm not a respecter of person." So look, stop lying to yourself because you're not special. Right. You're no more important important to me than any of my other children. Right. See? And so just because the world says you're important, God said that crap, that crap don't fly with me. Right. See? Right. It doesn't fly right. with me. So, so God called me in to preach the gospel. You know, and the thing though that we find in church now is that we don't have a lot of even a lot of men rather that preach the truth. Right. See? Right. And they're and they're the ones that are <clears throat> confusing the lie by saying it's okay for a woman to preach. Right. They are not God. Right. All it tells you the arrogance of these knuckleheads. Yes. See, yes. They think they can supersede the authority of God all because they're a pastor. Right. Let me tell you something. I may be a pastor, but he's God. Yes. He created everything. Right. And I'm saying it uh, once and I'll say it again. God created everything. And he has every right to tell you, me, and everybody else what we can do on his planet. Right. right. Everybody. Right. It don't matter, see. Right. And the sad thing is, he spells his stuff out in the Bible, but these folk don't want to believe what the Bible right. says. Right. So what do you think that says to God when you refuse to believe what he said? You rejected him. Right. You rejected right. his word. You rejected his son. You rejected everything that God stands for all because you say, I don't like that. I don't like that command. Right, See, right. Is there anywhere in Scripture where God says that I'll change it if you don't like it? <laughs> no. Ain't nowhere in Scripture He says that. Uh -huh. right. I'll change it because you don't like it. Uh-uh. See, 
The thing is, is that you need to get a hold of your doggone self and realize that you're not as important as you think you are. See? Amen. Amen. You need That's to true. do that, see? You're not as important as you think you are. That's right. You know? Amen. Thank see, the you thing Lord. that these preachers do, you know, and, and stuff is, they don't realize when they openly tell a lie mm -hmm. that God said, oh, a woman can preach, that's a lie. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That is a flat lie yeah, straight yeah, from is. the pit of hell. We're going to look at it in a minute. I ain't even uh, planning on talking about this this morning, but we're going to talk about it in a little bit. But first of all, let's talk about these lying preachers first. See? Because, you, let me tell you something. See, they think that because they're a preacher, they get to do whatever they want right. to do. Right. No, you don't. Right. Even if you are a preacher, you got to live holy right. before God. Right. you got to believe the truth and you've got to tell the truth. Right. The Bible says, thy word is true. Amen. And one thing that I've never been able to understand is, in John chapter 8, it says that if you continue in my word, mm -hmm. then are you my disciples indeed. Right. You shall know the truth mm -hmm. and the truth shall make mm -hmm. you free. Now, if I'm representing the kingdom of God, and if I'm representing <coughs> God as his son and as a mouthpiece for him, I got to tell you what he said. What he said. Right. Right. See, I don't get to do what I preach what I want to. Turn it uh, real quick to uh, Jeremiah 26. I think that's it. <coughs> you got a lot of these guys, man, all they want to do is preach stuff and say stuff that keeps them in right relationship, not with God, but with the people. Right. 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 They're more concerned about that, Preach. you know. And, and the thing is, is that I'm going to tell you something. King Saul <clears throat> went along with that plan with those people. Yeah. When they told Samuel, say, hey, we want us a king. Right. They said, because we want to be like everybody else. Right. See? Like all the other nations, we want us a king to fight our battles. What in the heck did they think God had been doing the whole time, right. even before they left Egypt? Right. Amen. See? When crap was happening in Egypt, God had peace and love and, 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 and fair weather and all of that on the side that the Jews was living in in Goshen. Right. They didn't have to worry about nothing. Right. See? And when they left and when, when he delivered them and they walked off through the wilderness or whatever, God took complete and total care of them. Yeah. Right. They didn't have to worry about no food. They didn't have to worry about no clothing. They didn't even have to worry about, you know, the weather. Right. Because he took care of everything. Yes, right. Everything. See? And how does he get repaid by that? We want us a king. Yeah. You know? And I'm going to tell you some of y'all, when God, when God delivered you and set you free from your sin. When you repented of your sin, and if you were sincere, you know that something just happened to yes. you. Right. That's right. You know that God did something right. yes. by His Spirit because, yes. man, yes. I feel light. Right. I feel a weight gone. I feel the peace of God. Yes. I feel the love of God. I have a faith in God that I never thought that I could have. Yeah. See? Right. So I know that something changed because I don't have a desire to sin anymore. Right. Right. See? And that's the one thing you start questioning mm -hmm. immediately when you get saved is the stuff that I used to do, some of it. Can I do that anymore? No, I can't do that. No, I can't do that anymore. You know, I can't. No, uh, uh, uh. Mm -mm. And you don't have a desire to do that stuff, right. see? And so you know that you tried to do that to your for your own self many, 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 many yeah. times. Right. Every time yeah. you try, yeah. F A I L E D, capital, <laughs> fail. <laughs> Every time. Right. Fail. See? <laughs> fail. And you know what? You fail because God wanted you wanted you to know the significance of what just happened to you when you put your faith in him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Put right. your faith in him. Right. See? Right. Right. And from that point, God was trying to show you from that point on, if you would choose to continue to walk in him. To walk in his light or whatever. Because what happened as Jesus walked more daily and daily with the Father. They became one. Right. That's they right. became one. Yeah. Jesus knew God's voice. You know. From anybody else's voice. Right. See. You never heard him say. Well, is, that, is that God? See. <laughs> How many times have you said. Who was that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> See. We don't have that relationship it seems like. But it ain't that we can't have it. Right. Amen. We just don't have the faith to pursue it. Right. See? It's true. 
Then that's the biggest difference. Yeah. You know, we're pursuing, <clears throat> but it's not God. Right. right. We're, we're pursuing self-satisfying things that the world says is going to make us better. Right. Mm. Going to make right. you feel better, make your life better. Mm. You know, that's what Osteen says all the time. <clears throat> it's not about right. putting your faith and your hope in God. Right. It's all about you being a better you. Yeah, and you making exactly. sure you can take yeah. care of yourself. Yeah. See? That's, That's the difference in people uh, and preachers that are of God and those who are not. Amen. You know, that's the difference. A preacher that is truly called by God, his sole purpose is for you to get your eyes on Jesus. Right. Right. It's for you to put your faith and your trust in Jesus. Right. Not in a man, not in a preacher, not right. in a church, not in a denomination or their doctrine. Right. See? Right. But to totally and completely put their faith and their trust in Jesus. Amen. See? That's the whole thing. That's all, that's all that matters. Putting your faith and trust in Jesus. See? Amen. And that's all he wants. Now these other guys, they're going to try to tell you. Well, you know, if you can get a little bit richer, you know, I mean, you know, you God go. is really going to bless you, there you know, you and it's all about money. Right. It's all about money. And most of these preachers, that's what they're about. Money. Yeah. Money, 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 money. Uh -huh. Not mine. I want yours. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the whole thing. That's See, true. they ain't not that. Oh, no, 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 no. Me get to a mission? Uh-uh. God said, I got this, you know, because I had faith to believe that he was going to give it to me. No, you didn't have no faith. Right. You just had sweet words of robbery. Yeah. Where you just robbed the people you that you listen to, that That's listen to it. you. See, you yeah. rob them. You, you make them feel like they're really doing something special. But the whole time as you're preaching, you can just see your hands start creeping down them aisles. Mm -hmm. You know, and just pulling out wallets. Yeah. He ain't got no boy, leave him on. Go on down, see. And what happens over time is the people make it easy for yeah. you to be able to yeah. distinguish yeah. who's got the money and who ain't. Because right. the ones who have the money, they ain't gonna want to have nothing to do with the ones that ain't got none. Right. See? Because they're not of our caliber in society. So they don't want to have nothing to do with you. And the sad thing about it, you got preachers like that too. Yes. Yep. Amen. See, they're supposed to be pastors of all the people. Right. Represent every doggone person that's in that church. And even if a roach happens to sneak up in there, you <laughs> preach to him too. See? <laughs> Leave nobody out. Right. See? Right. He's a preacher. <laughs> Let a roach say, well, I ain't got to worry about, you know, them seeing me on my back. <laughs> See, I'm listening to this word of life. See? <laughs> But really, in these churches, they they segregate people. Right. Amen. You know, and people segregate themselves True. as well. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. most preachers in the churches, they ain't going to have nothing to do with the bus driver, with the main guy working in the manufacturing plant, you know, and people like that. You know, if you're any kind of manufacturing, if you're a blue-collar worker, right. I put it that way. Yeah. They ain't going to have too much to do with you. Right. And I know that from experience. Right. See? You know, when I was going to certain churches, they thought that because I was a major league baseball player, they tried to treat you different. See? Right. But when you start spewing the word of God out and preaching and sharing the word of God, by ain't interested in none of that, man. Yeah. That stuff is, I mean, that's my past. I don't want to even talk about that. Right. See? Mm -hmm. right. And stuff. And all my focus is on the Lord or whatever. Then guess what? You may as well put me in the group with the, bu with the uh, bus drivers in there. Mm -hmm. See? And see, and this is a sad thing. I mean, a really, 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 really sad thing in the church. Preachers do not want to have anything to do with other preachers that tell the yeah. truth. Right. Yeah. They, don't, they don't want to have nothing to do with them. You know? They don't want to have anything to do with them. You know, you think I get phone calls from anybody mm -hmm. to come do a revival at their church or to preach at the preacher? No, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. And it ain't because I'm black or none of that. That's right. You know, it's the same thing that they felt about Jesus. Yeah. I know that people say probably the same thing about me. They don't really have a problem with me until they hear what I have to say. Right. When Jesus preached, you know, before he started preaching, you don't hear anything about anybody having a problem with Jesus. Right. Right. No problem. But as soon as he started preaching the gospel, the very first message after it, they wanted to kill him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, they wanted to kill him. You know why? A preacher, a pastor that preaches the gospel in the same vein as Jesus, he's a threat to people that are pastors in churches now. Yeah, yeah. See, right. because they know Jesus ain't going along with 
this doggone uh, 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 compromise in the church. Right. Yes, they know that Jesus ain't going to go along with the fact that, no, we ain't going to be preaching about sin and we ain't going to be preaching about repentance. They know Jesus would never, ever go along with that. Right. See? So Jesus would have a hard time preaching in churches today yes. in terms of being invited. Right. I'm telling you, they would doggone, if somebody said, hey, look, ain't that Jesus coming to our church or whatever? They go, yeah, look like the master. Yeah, because they're throwing, they're throwing stuff at his feet. Look, yeah, look, must be him or whatever. Okay, uh, get all the deacons together, you know, and and, and make sure make, you got the double lock. <laughs> you, you, you got the double lock. We ain't going to let him in. We, no, no, no. We don't, we don't want him in, see? So we're going we gonna to lock him out. See? And guess what? When Jesus go to the door and he knock and they won't let him in, you think that he's going to pound the door? Oh, he's going to turn right around and walk away. Right. See? He is not going to force himself anywhere. He is not welcome. Amen. And I'm the same Amen. way. See? True. You know, I'm not forcing my way to be friends with any of these pastors and stuff. See? I thank God I'm not. Right. You know, when the Bible talks about what fellowship does righteousness have with unrighteousness, I don't have anything to fellowship with the unrighteous right. preachers right. and all. Right. Right. Because God called them, called them doggone uh, <clears throat> In Jeremiah, he called, I'm sorry, in Isaiah, Isaiah called them a bunch of dumb dogs. Right. They can't even bark, see? Mm -hmm. They're more interested in your money than they are right. anything else. Right. They're yeah. more interested in getting rich than enriching you by the preaching of the gospel right. of Jesus, yeah. see? Right. They don't care nothing about you because the Bible says the only way that you're going to grow in faith is you've got to have the word of God, Amen. Amen. see? That's the only way you're going to grow in faith. But yet, right. they don't think it's important enough to give you the unadulterated word of God. Yeah, yeah. The uncompromised word of God. Right. They don't think they got to give you that, see? And these guys tell me, I love my church, you know. Y'all the best group of people <coughs> in the whole new United States, see? <laughs> and yet... And yet, if you were to doggone tuck your doggone shirt off, you would see doggone horns, you would see fins and all of that, because that dude is a devil in disguise. Right. See? <laughs> you don't think the devil is in disguise? Yes. In most, every yes. compromising church in this yes. town? Yes. He looks just like you and me. Yes. yes. Except he is led by a totally different spirit yes. right. than those who are of God. Right. See? Right. Then those who have got, let me read this right quick. It's in Jeremiah 26, you got all carried away there. Got all keyed up. It says in verse 1, in verse 1, In the beginning of the reign of, jo of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Stand in the, in the court, stand in the doors of the church of the Lord's house, and speak unto all the cities of Judah which come to worship in the Lord's house. All the words that I command thee to speak unto them. Diminish not a word. Wow. <clears throat> I can't change nothing up in here, man. If I do, if I change something coming out of this book, I'm in trouble with God. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. He commanded me not to change anything that he told me to say. Right. And when I'm preaching his word, I'm telling you what he's saying. Yeah. See? And he said, don't change any word. And if you go over in Revelation and it talks about if you add to the word, if you take right. away from the word, right. your name can be blotted right. out the book of life or God will put these plagues on you. Right. You are messed up. Yes. See? Yes. Those guys that uh, call themselves preachers, Men of God, but they don't preach the truth. Mm -hmm. Do you know them guys are liars? Yes, yes. And their father is the devil? Yeah. And Jesus said, the lust of their father, they're yeah. going to do. Yeah. See? But ain't nobody going to call the devil's children out. Right. Ain't nobody going to say Osteen is a child of the devil. Mm. Ain't nobody going to say T.D. Jakes is a child of the devil. Right. See? And when you got these preachers around here locally talking about, you know, well, you know, we got Pastor Pat or Pastor uh, uh, Jennifer or whatever. They, he's a liar, too. Yeah, yeah. That's right. He's lying. Yeah, he don't have any Bible for that. Right. See? The Bible, if the Bible says preach the truth, yeah. you can only preach what's written in the truth, That's right. in the yes. book. See? Right. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth. truth. See? Thy word is truth. 
Right. See? So when they start saying, oh, well, we tell you the truth. If you got any kind of guts or any kind of backbone, you say you're lying, preacher. Yeah. You are lying. See? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I asked a preacher that the other week by way of message, and he doggone he took the me he took the message down. Yep. Cause I asked him if he had a problem with what I'm preaching or what I'm sharing with him and stuff, and it was all the word of God. Yeah. See, yep. I sent him a doggone uh, video that I preached about women preachers and stuff, and he took that down too. Yep. See, <laughs> yep. you know that dude over at the bridge, he didn't like that. Right. Come he on. didn't like it at all. See. And the thing is, what that tells me, you got men who want to be relevant more to people than to God. Ooh, see? Right. Now, what happened to those people that I was talking about a while ago that were in the book of Samuel? Yeah. It didn't work out too well for them. Mm -mm. See? And it didn't work out well at all for Samuel. Right. See? So if God took his spirit, mm -hmm. for Saul rather, not right. Samuel, when God took his spirit from Saul, you don't think he's taking his, his spirit from this dude at the bridge or anybody no. else in any church anywhere? Uh -huh. right. yes. He'll take his spirit from him. He is no respecter of persons. Right. Right. If you are a liar, God is going to call you a liar. Yes. Right. See? Yes. If you tell lies, he's going to call you yes. a liar. Yes. Right. See? And so the thing is, is that if you tell truth, you're going to be a truth teller. Right. Yeah. You will be identified as a servant of God. Right. What does yes. the scripture say in Romans? That whomever you serve, that's who you become the servant of. Right. right. Whether good or evil. Right. See? So if you're telling lies, if you're deceiving people, if you're manipulating people, then you're doing the devil's bidding. Right. Because you're doing nothing any different than the devil did in the Garden of Eden. Right. Right. That's true. Yep. You will know them by right. their right. fruit. Right. That's right. what Jesus said. That's right. right. Yes, he did. So they are walking in the fruit of the devil. Right. 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 And so if that's whom you are serving, then you are a child of the devil serving your father, the devil. Right. It's what you do. Right. See, the reason people get mad at me, because I tell them the truth. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not ashamed to tell you the truth. Right. I'm not embarrassed to tell you the truth. Right. See? I would much rather you rather tell you the truth and you open your eyes. Because God has really revealed something to you and you repent of whatever sin it is that God just exposed. See? Right, right. You can't walk around following a man like you got a doggone hook on one end of your nose and the other part of the hook attached to his rear end. Right. Following him around everywhere he goes. Right. See? You don't even do that with God. Right. See? right. But you'll follow a man. Right. See? Right. And, 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 and King Saul lost all relationship that he had with God. Right. And God is doing the same thing to these preachers, but they just don't realize because they're so arrogant, right. they're so full of themselves, that they right. think that they can do whatever they want to do because I'm in charge of this church or whatever. No, you're not. Right. If you're right. in charge, then you are doing the devil's will because everything that we do in the house of God should be done to the glory of God and to him alone Amen. we are not standing right. up here trying to get recognition from anybody right. See, Amen. we are making sure that we keep ourselves humble that we esteem even the people that we serve and esteem them better than ourselves Amen. See, most of these pastors don't want to stay in check they don't want to be put in check because they like the pats on the back. Yeah. They like the nice salaries they get. Yeah. They like the, like the nice homes they got. They right. like the nice cars they get that some uh, 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 person in the church, you know, buys them a new car in exchange every year. Right. And yeah. all that is is bribery. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. That's all that is. Yeah. As long as you do whatever I want, we will buy you a new car every year. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. We'll pay your mortgage. For one year. Mm -hmm. See? You don't think they be cutting deals in church? Yes. And you know why they cut deals in church? It's not the house of God. Right. If it was the house of God, that's the last thing anybody gonna be thinking about. Right. And if a preacher found out that that kind of mess is going out on going on out there in the vestibule or whatever, he gonna nip that crap in the bud. Right. That's right. He gonna because what you're doing when you allow sin to run rampant in the church, 
All you're doing is you're like doing a real disservice to the people in that church. Amen. You are telling them that it's okay for them to cut deals in the church. Right. That it's okay for the rich in the church to really do basically whatever they want. Right. It's okay for them, you know, to change the doggone time of service and stuff. It's okay with them to say, well, no, we ain't going to be letting you preach that kind of stuff because we'll run you out of town on a rail, Jack. Right. See? You got to preach what we want you to preach. See, yeah. and see, and this is the this is the sad thing about this stuff. It's the reason that you got so many confused people running around here is because you got so many different doctors right. running around here. Right. Right. See, Amen. and you got people thinking that well, you know, I'm Baptist, so I'm going to believe the Baptist doctrine. You know, the once saved, always saved doctrine. We all going to sin doctrine and stuff. You know, yeah. we going we gonna to believe that or whatever, but they don't have no Bible for none of that. Right. And you know, the thing about it is God never, ever put in scripture that there's more than one kind of church. Right. See, Amen. he never said that. Right. Turn to Ephesians 4. So in Ephesians chapter 4, in verse uh, 4, in verse 3 he says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And that's and he's talking that to everybody that's a believer, man. Right. Mm -hmm. We ought to be working towards that. But you can't get the doggone church to call, you know, anybody a brother or a sister if they don't attend their church. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. They miss the whole thing. And, and, you know, the sad thing about that is, as I've said before, the church act like it's okay. They're yeah. okay with that. Yeah. See? They're okay with the fact, you know, that they don't have a clue what it means to be the family of God. Right. They don't have a clue about that. See? And it's not even important to them, see? Because if it were, then, you know, they wouldn't be as distant to other people who believe than they do. But right. see, the problem with a lot of those folks, they don't believe. Right. Amen. You cannot call yourself a believer if you don't believe the whole word of God. Right. Right. You can't. You can't call yourself a believer. Because if it's okay with you to omit or forget some parts of the scriptures or whatever, that's not God. Right. Jesus didn't omit anything when he preached. Right. He didn't omit anything when he lived and walked on the earth. Right. He did everything in the word of God that he was supposed to do, that he was told to do by God. Right. And we are no different. Right. And whether these preachers want to believe it or not, Jesus Christ is our example as what it is like to truly be a pastor, Amen. to be a servant to the people, right. of the people, for the people, right. by the people. See, right. it has nothing to do with us other than our obedience to obey what God has commanded us to do. Right. That's all that, that, that that's the most important thing that we do as pastors. See. Right. But it's been it's been it's been filtered in so much because see this is what happens when man becomes in charge of anything. First of all, they're gonna screw it up. Yeah. Right. Anything yeah. of God right. they, that God tells, they're gonna screw it yeah. up. Yeah. Why? Because they are prideful. They're arrogant. Right. They want things done the way they want them done. Right. See, why do you think churches you know elect a pastor mm -hmm. and not let God send them? Mm -hmm. A pastor. Right. Wow. Huh? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? They want the control. Yes. Right. They want to make sure that the doctors that we've been walking in, which are not of God for the last 40 years, right. we're going to keep those doctrines in place. Yeah. Right. Because keeping those doctrines in place require nothing of me. Right. You know, just to be a, a, a good person and just to, to, to make sure, you know, that I'm faithful to the church. Mm -hmm. You know, that I'm serving the church and the church family. Mm -hmm. See, the church family. You know, the first Baptist church family. Mm -hmm. The second church, second Baptist church family. The assembly of God family. Mm -hmm. You know, but they ain't going to have nothing to do with them other dudes out there. You know, and a lot of them have more of God than you do because you probably ain't got none if you think that way. Right. See, there's a certain character that a believer in Jesus Christ 
will not only have, but will become. Right. They will become just like Jesus. Right. And the problem in all of these churches, they never encourage you to walk in faith. Right. They never encourage you to stand firm in your faith. They never encourage you to guard your heart, to search your heart, and make sure that there's nothing in you that would keep you separated from God. Right. See? Amen. And the reason they don't do that is because they're not spiritual minded people right. and they're not people who are full of the spirit of God. Right. See, you know, in the New Testament, <clears throat> when those guys got filled with the Holy Spirit and the Bible says, even according to John, that you will receive power when Jesus has filled you, baptized you in the Holy Ghost. See? Right. And if you notice from that day forward, the change that came about in the lives of every one of those disciples who were now apostles. Right. Every one of them. See, it changed. Right. And you never read where they were uh, apologetic because of the fact that they had to live by every word of God. Mm -hmm. They counted it joy. Yeah. They counted it, you know, being faithful to Jesus and right. doing the work of the Lord, see? Right. Because, see, the thing about it, they did not forget the difference and the change that Jesus made in their life. Right. And how much different they are now. Right. As opposed to before, mm -hmm. see? They didn't forget that. And not only that, they hung on every word of God. Yeah. They may have strayed out, but you never read where they strayed off a little bit and didn't come back. Mm -hmm. They all came back. Yeah. Even when Peter denied Jesus three times, he still came back. Yes. Right. Why? Because the dude loved Jesus, and guess what else? Jesus loved him. Amen. See? That's right. Amen. And Jesus knew his heart. Mm -hmm. And Jesus knew that he would repent and he would say, Lord, you know I love you. You know I love you. You know I love you. See? Mm -hmm. And Jesus knew he loved him because the reason uh, he did a lot of those stupid things because he loved him so much. Mm -hmm. See, But the thing was, they counted it joy to do the will of God, right. to obey God. Right. See, And they had no problem separating themselves from people who were not of God. Right. See, They didn't have any problem with that. None whatsoever. See? So in 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 in, in, uh, in, he, in Ephesians it says it says there is one body, mm -hmm. one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. He's talking about the people there that were born again. Right. He said, that, and, and obviously somebody had tried to offer them another gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, they did it in the, in Galatia, and they did it in the, in Corinthians. Mm -hmm. See, so what makes you think they wouldn't do, try to do it in, in Ephesus too? Right. See, but they were warning people. They said, look, it ain't one gospel, but there are gonna be people that tell you, well, cause I'm Baptist, we live by our doctrine. Well, I'm Methodist, we live by our doctrine. I'm Pentecostal, we live by our doctrine. <coughs> and you know, in all of these churches that call themselves non-denominational, they're denominational. Right. Yeah. Because they all got their own set of rules. Right. See? Yeah. And that sets them apart from everybody else. Right. See? Yes. And they want you to know it too. No, we don't. We ain't no. You think I'm all Baptist preachers come preach in my church and I'm Pentecostal? That ain't happening. Mm. If the Bible says we're one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, you know, see, this is the thing. People will separate themselves from you all because of a man's doctrine and a man's creation because the doctrine of Jesus and the doctrine of God says if we are children of God we are one family in one another and there's no difference right. in what we believe and in how we live because we live by every word of God. That's, right. Amen. See, Amen. That's, right. That's the thing, see. Yep. These folks, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. These folks who talk about this uh this one saved, always saved stuff. And, and God just showed me this. I mean, like a big old light bulb come on. He said, why are you arguing with something that man put out there? Yeah. 
He said, did I say that in my, in my word that, you know, that once saved, always saved? He said, did I say that? I said, no. He says, if you, he says, you can count on it that if it came from man, it has nothing to do with my word and my gospel whatsoever. Right. See? Right. And, but they will take that doctrine of man and they will defend that sucker. They will come yeah. up with all kind of scripture. Right. Using them out of context to try to get you to believe that you can't take away my doggone sacred cow. Because if you take that away, then, you know, I can't sin without consequences. Right. That's right. Because all that says is, you know, if I know that I can't lose my salvation, I can sin all yeah. I want to, right. and I'm still going to make it into heaven. Yeah. You are believing a doggone lie, sure. and you're a liar. Yes. Because you done told somebody else that same right. crap. Right. See? Right. And the Bible specifically says in several scriptures, Old and New Testament. Right. You know, that in Revelation it says that your name can be blotted out. Yep. Mm -hmm. You yep. know? Yep. And that God will just say that, look, you, 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 you're gonna get all these plagues because you started messing with my word. Right. And see, this is what people are doing. And let me tell you what it says, you know, on a bigger, bigger picture. They have no fear of God. Right. They have no fear of God because they think they can do whatever they want to do. And if they don't have any fear of God, then they don't care what God thinks about right. it. Right. See? Yep. What they think and what they want to do supersedes the truth. Right. See? It don't matter that God said that. We do what we want to do. Just like the, when Samuel tried to dissuade those people, you know, from wanting the king. You know, they said, we don't care. Yeah. We want a king, see? And I'm going to tell you how great how, how great and merciful God is. He told them, he said, look, y'all want them guy, that guy as your king? You want a king? He said, look, I'm going to tell you, the guy's going to dog going to rip your hide. Yeah. He's going to take everything that you got. He's going to make you his servants, his slaves, his concubines, and all of that. And they're going to take everything you got and split it among his people. Yeah. That's what God said he's going to do. Yeah. You know, no, no, we don't care. Yeah. That's a king. Yeah. We don't yeah. care. Now, think about that for a minute. Think about the condition of people's yeah. hearts yeah. when they have no concern about what God thinks about what they're right. doing, mm -hmm. even though they know it's sin. Right. In that situation, it was sinful and it was rebellion. See, <clears throat> and they didn't, it was, it, they didn't want nothing to do with God. It was rebellion. So what did they do? They got their king. God ended up, the king literally left them, you know, because God left him. See? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and a lot of y'all out there right now, you know, you, you got so much more faith in your church and in your pastor and your preacher than you do God. That's rebellion. Right. And not only that, it's witchcraft. Yes, it is. Idolatry. It's witchcraft and idolatry yeah. and stuff. And you're doing all of this stuff thinking that just because you are faithful and loyal to a man, you know, that is totally, totally against the commandment of God. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 118, Put no confidence right. in man. Right. None yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. In Jeremiah it says, Lean not on the arm of the flesh, because if you do, you will be cursed with a curse. Yes. Right. See? Yes. So we got a bunch of preachers and a bunch of people in these churches, they got curses hanging on. Right. See? Yeah. All because they fail to obey God. Yep. See? And what you're literally telling God is the sacrifice Jesus made. It just wasn't enough. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't enough. That's it. See? So anytime you feel like you got to go get some add-ons and stuff, you're spitting in the face of God. Amen. See? Amen. And you, and you don't really think, and I'm going to tell y'all something. God has feelings, whether you believe it or not. Yes, yes. If we were created in the image of God, he's got feelings. Yes. See? Remember when Jesus wept over Lazarus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got feelings. Yeah. See? And it breaks God's heart when his children walk away from him. Yes, it does. Amen. And we see that example in the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. And many of you, God, know that you ain't going to come back. Mm -hmm. Right. That's true. true. He knows true. that you're gone for good. That's right. right. Because the thing about how many of those people. In the wilderness, how many of them repented? Right. Mm -hmm. And were able to enter into the promised land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many? Two of the original. Two people mm -hmm. out of a whole bunch. See? How many people got to get on the boat? 
with Noah. Eight. Eight. Mm -hmm. Eight people. Eight. Out of the whole world. Yep. Mm -hmm. However many people on the world, eight. eight. See. How many people got spared in Sodom and Gomorrah? Three. Yep. How many? Three. See? So you think, <clears throat> some of you guys think that you can just spit in God's face, treat him any way you want, rebel against his word, reject his son, even though you say you believe in him, and you still think that God is going to love you as his child? Because if God were to love you as his child, he would have to spare you from your sin. But he ain't. Right. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And after you die, there comes judgment. That's right. Yes. That's right. If you didn't do God's will, you're going to That's hell. Right. That's right. True. If you refuse to do God's will and true. die that way, you are going to hell. That's true. Right. Without question. Right. Mm -hmm. There ain't no question where you go. Right. Yeah. But yet, you seem to think that it's okay to have fornicators in your church. Mm -hmm. To have adulterers in your church. And a lot of preachers are among that group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of, they, they commit adultery. See? Remember that preacher years ago had that church up there? Uh, church of the Harvest, I guess it was. Ran off with a doggone woman in the church, married her, divorced his wife, yeah. and all of this stuff. And the thing about it is they still let him preach. Yeah. Without repentance. Right. Mm -hmm. So if there's no repentance, whatever sin that you got is still on you. Right. Amen. Remember I told y'all? If you know that you've got sin on you and you've got sin in your heart and you never ever repented of it, you still got it. That's right. Amen. And if it's been on you a long time, the root probably about that long now. Deep down, it's deep. See, because what happens to a, a a a weed if you don't deal with it? You know, when it's young, it'll just grow. And guess what? Some weed actually look like flowers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're not those, they're tares. <laughs> you got plants that are tares because <laughs> yeah. they look like they're a real flower, but they're not. Right, right. And that's the way a lot of people are in the church. They look like, and only because of what you see. That one day out of the week when right. they come to church on Sunday, because you don't know what they're like the rest of the week. That's see, true. That's, true. Amen. True. that's why I'm very reluctant to say say that uh, certain people are saved. Right. You know, but the thing is, is that is that God is going to punish all of these guys because God says there's one body, there's one spirit, there's one Lord, there's one faith, there's one God and Father of all. And but they're saying no, 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 no. no. We all get to have our own little dwelling place to worship and to fellowship. Right. See? Yeah. And we get to call it whatever we want, God. See? But see, God knew this stuff was coming. Yes. That's yeah. why he warned you about deceivers. Yeah. That's why he warned you about false prophets, false preachers, and false teachers. That's why he warned you about those guys, because he knew what was going to happen. These pastors uh, who tell you lies, they don't know God. Right. Because the people who are truly of God, they always tell the truth. Right. You know, no matter, I mean, even if it may hurt your feelings, they're going to tell you the truth. They're children of the devil. It's what God says. Turn to John 8. In verse 38, we'll start there. Jesus is speaking. And he's talking to these Jews who claim that they know God. They claim that God is their father and they are the seed of Abraham. Right. And so in verse 38, it says, I speak that, and this is Jesus talking. <clears throat> I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. See? And what they're doing is they're trying to call Jesus a liar on sly. Yeah. They're trying to tell Jesus, you know, that really you're not the son of God, but we are. Right. 
See? And I want you to understand something. I think I said it a little bit ago. They didn't have a problem really with Jesus, but they hated what he said. Right. See? Yeah, because did. Jesus is truth. He's not only the author of truth, he is truth. Amen. So he ain't going to be telling you nothing but the truth. That's right. He ain't right. going to be lying to you and deceiving you about anything. Right. And whatever he says, he means. He's not apologetic. He's not going to doggone try to explain away what he said. He's not going to try to uh, uh, placate you and, and, and pat you on the shoulder and say, I'm really sorry before what I said. No, Jesus ain't going to be doing that. Mm -hmm. And the reason he's not going to do that because everything that comes from Jesus is going to be good for us just like it is from the Father because what we get from Jesus, we did get it from the That's Father. Right. Right. Because he does and says whatever God right. tells him to do right. and tells him to say. See. So he's speaking, and when he's speaking, God is speaking. Right. So in verse 39, it says, They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. See? Now right. that's what these preachers do to other preachers that tell the truth. They don't want nothing to do with them. Yeah. See? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. A pastor that is that is truly a, a manifesting and walking in the things of God, he's doing what his father is telling him to say and to, and to do. See? Those preachers that are lying and being deceptive and trying to build their own kingdom in the churches where they are, they are children of the devil. Right. See? Right. Jesus never made anything about himself. Right. Any true pastor called of God is not going to make anything about him at all. Right. Everything is going to be about the word. Everything is going to be about God. Right. Everything. Right. See, there ain't going to be no, no, no hoodly winking you and, and tricking you or none of that stuff. See, right. and that's why people hate the truth tellers because the truth tellers is going to tell you what God says, even though you got doggone, I mean, uh, 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 uh. Uh, knives going down, just scraping down your back because of the fact that you walking in sin and you didn't think anybody knew about it, but yet God says, I'm going to expose it, see? Right. I'm going to expose it. And God exposes your sin so that you can get rid of it through Christ by repenting of it right. and stuff, see? And see, and that's the thing. And, and not only that, look at it this way. If God didn't love you, he wouldn't care whether you walked in yeah. sin or not. Right, right. He would let you just keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, it will get to a point with some people to where he just got to turn them over to their sins. Right. And let them do whatever it is they want to do. Right. Because the Bible says God will let you make your own choices. Mm -hmm. He never said, I'm only going to let you make the good choices. No, if you want to be walking a bad choice and if you want to walk in sin, God going to let you do that. Right. Because, see, the thing about it was, if God, you know, would usurp his authority over your sin, that would be no need for you to have to repent. Right. See? Right. He'd make you live right. right. See? But he wouldn't even make you live right because you would resist him tooth and nail. See? Right. Because if a person wants to sin, they are going to yeah. sin. Right. I don't care who it is. Right. I don't care if Jesus uh, said, look, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to come Monday and I'm going to walk with you. All through the week. I'm going to walk with you. See. That ain't going to change nothing. Right. You know why? Because in their heart. They still want to do that. Yeah. See. And the only way any person is ever. Ever going to change. For the good. Forever. If they want to. Is only when Jesus gets a hold of their heart.